Good morning. We are in our third Sunday of Lent, and we are looking at this theme of leaning, um, of leaning in. And today we're talking about cultivating change. That's a word you really like to hear, right? Change. (laughs) I've really gotten into plants during COVID. It's funny because one of my friends said during COVID, she acquired 40 plants and coming out of COVID, she now has 12, (laughs) suggesting that she had a lot of time and attention and now not so much so. But last year we won uh, won a grant to improve our lawn. And so we did probably more work on our lawn last year than we've done in a a while. And uh, by the way, this Saturday, March 26th at 10 a.m. If you want, we'd love to have you help us work on our lawn this year. Please join us. But this grant opened a door for me um, because when we got the grant, I wanted to be able to write and say that we had successfully fulfilled the grant. Um, And so I ended up at a lot of garden stores. I ended up at a lot of places where there were gardening tools. And I looked at a lot of plants and equipment and stuff. And so by the time we had finish our adventure, I had become a plant mom. What started out as a few plants has increased, you know, but my record, my history kept playing in my mind that I'm no person that has a green thumb. But I was willing now to give it a try. I even joined a community of plant lovers out on social media, and I've been listening to their wisdom about how to keep these plants I have alive. I bought some cute vases as well, and I bought plants that were beyond just the average. I have a Chinese evergreen, and I have a calathea, and I've learned the names of plants. I don't just know plants, but I I know the different categories. I know a little bit more. I've upped my plant game adventure. And if a plant looks sick, I pack the pan up quickly, and I go back to the plant store where I purchased the plant from and say, hey, help me with this plant. Or I get on my social media group and say, what's wrong with the plant? And it wasn't until I heard Josiah say a couple weeks ago that I had 18 plants that I realized something had changed for me. Well, one, I thought, he's lying. I don't have 18 plants. (laughs) But then I went home and I counted them and I was like, oh my God, I really do have 18 plants. Something changed for me. And that is I began to listen to the plant. I was letting the plant tell me how it was doing. I was trying to understand each plant and its needs. And what others said made that plant happy. It wasn't about me doing the same thing to all the plants and hoping that the plants would look just beautiful in my house, but about really tuning in to where the plant was and how the plant was doing. Today, I want to talk about change, cultivating change. In the biblical text today, it's funny. The man is talking about a fig tree, plant planted. In three years, the fig tree has shown no potential. The man who had the tree planted is upset because he is expecting this tree to produce fruit. And well, as you read today, the tree does not. Because the tree is not living up to the man's expectation, the man says, cut it down. Something must be wrong with this tree. This tree is not serving its purpose to me. It should not be allowed to continue to waste soil. Clearly, not bearing fruit is a problem here for this character. The man gets upset because the tree is not doing what it should do and says, I'm done with the tree. And he asked his worker to cut it down, cut the tree down. In this parable, Jesus is talking about fruit. And generally, when Jesus is talking about fruit, he's talking about change. Change is happening all around us. It's happening without our consent. Most of us have smartphones, whether we feel that the phone is smart or we're smart or not. And on these phones, we have apps that are supposed to make our life maybe funnier, maybe easier, or maybe just a little bit better. I have a few apps. As marketing would have it, they give us incentives to get apps. You know, like if you download this app, you get this offer, so and so. But once the incentive is over, we still have the apps and they are banking on us to use those apps on our phone. So, okay, I was shocked. I decided to count up how many apps I had on my phone. 
How many apps do you guys think that you have on your phone? Don't have a clue, do you? <laughs> I thought I had maybe 50. But when I counted how many apps I had on my phone, I had 146 apps. You all, I bet you if you count yours, you might be close to me <laughs> or in the running. But here's the thing. These apps make small changes all the time, and they don't ask me. Facebook doesn't call me up and say, hey, how do you feel about us making this change? They just make them, and then I have to go with the change that is made. I have to get with it. I have to adapt. I wake up one morning and, oh, whoa, this app has really changed. And you know what I have to do? I have to learn. I have to adapt. And that's what's happening in our world. Change is happening, and we are adapting. Many of you resisted Facebook and Zoom before COVID, didn't you? And what happened? I remember I used to beg the council, let's do a Zoom meeting. No, nah, Shirley, we got to get face-to-face. -face. You know, it's just something about face-to-face. -face. And then COVID happened. And what happened? You see, change happens all the time without our consent. But imagine if we were actually willing to change. The man who had the tree planted wanted nothing more to do with the tree. As far as he was concerned, he was over it. But the worker, the worker, the gardener who assisted the man says what? The gardener says, let's, let's give this tree one more chance. Let's give it one more year. Let's give it one more try. And it's not like we're going to do anything because that's a fool that does nothing different and expects something to happen. But let's dig around it this time. Let's put some manure around it. Let's cultivate some change. This is a fig tree plant. And even though this plant isn't doing what we think it should be doing, maybe we can try something different. I'm going to change the environment where the tree is planted. Sometimes we have to cultivate change. Sometimes change just doesn't happen, but you got to cultivate change. I've told this story before, but it bears telling again about the dad and his son. Every Saturday, they would cook pancakes for the whole family. Mom was off duty. The son says to the dad, one Saturday, why do we cook our pancakes in this big black pan? The dad says, oh, well, son, that's what me and my dad did. But the more the dad thought about it, the more curious he became. And so when he got on the phone with his dad, he said, hey, dad, why did we always fix our pancakes in the big black cast iron pan? And his dad said, well, son, that's what me and my dad did. To be sure, there's nothing wrong with cooking pancakes in a black cast iron pan, OK? You can breathe. But what this said is that there's a generational pattern that shows us how easy it is for us to get stuck doing the same thing without ever questioning it. And how we can pass on things from one generation to a next, whether it's helpful or not. The church is a space for a community to gather, to be spiritually nourished and to be sent into the world to be light. But how we do it, has it really changed? Why do we meet on Sunday morning? Why do we worship the same way? Why do we still try to get folks to come to us versus us going to them? Why? Because this is who we are. Because it was what was given to us. Everything around us is changing. Everything around us is changing. And so maybe even we too, the church, needs to change. A couple of weeks ago, I was telling you guys about the grocery cart. Remember, the grocery carts have to be in almost unusable condition before they are decommissioned by their stores these days. So now I do a pre-check when I'm getting a grocery cart. So as you can see, I seem to be in the grocery cart business. I seem to need grocery carts quite often because I shop for food. And so before I get up in the produce section and discover that this grocery cart does not work, I do a pre-check. I roll it to see if the wheels are willing to move, if it's not getting stuck or not. I roll it to see if it gravitates toward a certain way. Does it have the capacity to be guided or does it show a proclivity to always go left or to always go right? You know, those grocery carts keep reminding me of people. Somebody don't hear me this morning. We have folks who sometimes have a proclivity to go towards the gutter. 
we have people that sometimes have a proclivity to go toward being very critical. We have some that want to veer off just because, and yet there is still a remnant of God's people who are willing to move forward. Every now and then in this season of Lent where we're leaning in, we have to check ourselves out and say, what kind of cart am I? Am I ready to change? Am I ready to try something different? Or if not try something different, not tear down something different when someone else suggests it, which is different from asking someone else to change. But am I ready to be changed? Am I ready to have my soul and my soul cultivated? Am I ready to be guided? Am I ready to sit somewhere else so that I might see or experience something differently? The man that had the tree planted wanted the, to give up on the tree. Ever feel like giving up? Ever feel like, wow, this hill is too big? Ever wake up in the morning and wish you could just sleep a little bit longer? Ever feel like circumstances are just too great? Ever feel like the job is just too overwhelming? Or maybe your boss? Ever feel like this rat race is just too much? Ever feel like a list of things to do just feels like it's too much? Ever feel like the papers on your desk are just too much? Ever feel like you got too many people depending on you? Ever feel like the sustainability of our church on the corner is just too much? Have you ever wanted to give up? Ever just wanted to say, not today? Ever wanted to walk away? The gardener says to the man, let's not. Let's not give up on the plant. Let's not give up on the fig tree. Let's not give up on each other. Let's not give up on the church. Let's not give up on us. But let's cultivate the soil around the plant. Let's try something different. Let's give this plant another chance. I was remembering Jesse Bradford on this week, and I remember before COVID, his kids decided to bless him with a brand new smartphone. He was so mad. Do you guys remember? He was so frustrated. He loved his old phone. It worked for him. He knew how to flip it open and dial. He was so frustrated with that smartphone, and yet his kids wanted him to have it. At first, sometimes change is hard. We just hate it, we hate it. It rips the Band-Aid off, it makes us uncomfortable. It frustrates our life, it's inconvenient. And why is it necessary? I remember my mom when I was trying to teach her how to text. Me and her have two different renditions of this story. My rendition is, I taught my mom how to text and open up a world. She's like, you were impatient and I taught myself. But at any event, she learned how to text, and that change made a difference. I'm sure her pastor is saying it made a difference, too, because he got a lot more text. I get a lot of text, but it opened a world up to her. You see, change opens doors for a senior in a rural area of Virginia to connect with others. The gardener said, let's give this fig tree one more chance. Let's give the fig tree one more year. Today I began talking about plants and cultivating change and during this Lent season as we lean in maybe we can lean into the possibility of change in us. See it's always easier to suggest somebody else change. It's much harder to look at ourselves and say hey maybe I can make the change. The tech talks about a fig tree and change. We are more than capable of change. If nothing else, COVID taught us that we are capable of change. Maybe during this season of Lent, we can look at everything and how we do it differently. I'd like to end here today with this story. I remember when I was back in seminary taking this class, most programs have one class that all students have to take. And so it's a big class, it's full. And we had a couple of professors. And so often we were running in at the last minute to get to this class. This particular day I was running into class and I saw one of the professors at the door and I spoke to him and I greeted him and he responded. And then he said, why do you always sit in the same seat? Sounds like the pancake skillet question, doesn't it? 
I looked around and I'm like of all the people to choose to ask that question because I'm not the only one sitting in the same seat every week after week. Why me? But his question stayed with me and it irked me and it irritated me. And I thought about it. What do you guys think happened the next time class happened that I did? Yes, Peter, I sat in a different seat. One of the beautiful things about change is when you change, it impacts change in other people. Because guess what? When I sat in another seat, the person that sat in that seat didn't have a seat and they had to move in. Well, you know what happened. All of us had to kind of change our seats. I couldn't walk into a class ever again and always sit in the same seat. You see, that professor pointed out something to me that really I hadn't noticed, like, hey, it's just a seat. I feel comfortable. I tend to sit on this side of the classroom. And the next time, and the next time, and the next time, I would always look for the opportunity to sit in different seats. Even here at United, when we have meetings, I try not to sit at the head of the table all the time because that's what's expected. But sit on the side or around or move around sit in a different spot because when you sit in a different spot you meet different people you have a different experience your eyes are open in a different way the professor speaking to me created all kinds of opportunities for me to live my life different i have taken that lesson with me many places don't become too comfortable don't become too complacent change your seat Change your route. Cultivating change can cause a fig tree to grow. Adding a little bit of soil, a little bit of manure, with a little bit of change, united we can bear fruit. Amen.